Hello. This is a tutorial using Microsoft PowerPoint 2007. We will be working with visual elements of PowerPoint. To begin with, we will work with SmartArt graphics. When you have to present information to an audience, text is not always the best way to present content. Graphics are a much more powerful way to visually convey information about flow, sequence, process, and organization, or even to make simple points. Smart art graphics, dynamic and exciting graphics, are always available for you to use on your slides in PowerPoint. For this demonstration, I have a brief PowerPoint on the cotton industry that we will use the graphics of PowerPoint to enhance. So, to begin, let's select slide number four. Click on the slide to activate the pane. Go up to the paragraph group and select the pull down for smart art graphics. Notice the hover feature. As you hover over the different options, it immediately and visually shows you what it's going to look like should you select that option. Let's select the pyramid. Also remember to try to get into the habit to save your changes as you go. Now move up to the Smart Art Design area, Smart Art Styles, and select the More pull down. Notice how as you hover over the different options, again it gives you a preview. Let's select the cartoon. Now go up to Color Changes and let's select Accent number 2. Now let's format the color of the triangle itself. Select the triangle, go up to Format, select Shape Fill, and you can change it to whichever color you want. Let's select a dark olive. Let's save our changes. And we're now going to work with organizational charts. Let's move down to slide number 19. It's an empty slide. Go to the Layout group off the Home tab. And let's select Title Content, select the Insert Small Graphic on the panel, go to the left side and select Hierarchy, and let's select Hierarchy within these. This can be changed at any time. Okay. And again, let's save our changes. These text boxes can be filled in by going directly to the box, or you can select the text pane. I'm going to fill them in directly. Notice how the text automatically adjusts to the size of the box. So we'll do lint in this one. Last one is cottonseed oil. Now you can expand this or contract it. If uh, you didn't want this one, you can click on this green dot here and you can select cut and that would get rid of it. If you needed to add another level at this level, select here, right click there, select. below. 
and it would add an additional. And again, you can get rid of that. Now I need to add uh, some more levels here as a cotton seed has uh, far, far more byproducts that we need to um, be aware of. So an additional way to add more levels is while still under Smart Art Tools and Design, we can come over to Add Shapes. You want to select the level you're on that you want to add to. Select Add Shape and Add Shape below. I'm going to add uh, several under cotton seed oil. So let's always make sure that you select the right level that you want. Again, the right level. And I need additional ones under cottonseed also. And under this level, I need an additional three. So again, let's pop those in. And I need one more down here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fill these in, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've filled these in uh, to the levels with all of the different byproducts of cotton and the sub byproducts. As you can see, you can expand this as far as you want, uh, but it does start to get a little small if you expand it too far. So let's now save our changes to this point. Now we're going to take a look at word art. Let's go to slide number 13. And let's grab this. Wrapped for protection. Let's go ahead and copy it to the clipboard. Let's go to slide 14. And click here. And let's paste that. Okay, and let's go ahead and move this up into the sky a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and format this. Let's go to Format, and let's do the More pull down, and let's come down and select the Fill Accent to Mate Bevel. Okay. Now let's go up to the Shape Styles, select the pull down for Shape Effects. And let's take a look at glow. And let's maybe come down to here and select that. And let's go to back to the word art styles. Select text effects. Get the pull down. Let's go to transform. And we want to select the outside ring. Okay, it's a little difficult to read, so let's format that. Okay, I'm going to resize the box a little bit to give us something that we can read. There we are. Okay, and let's save our changes. Okay, okay now we're going to uh, work with charts. Let's uh, go up to slide number seven. And let's select the insert chart icon. And now we're going to select column. And we're going to select the clustered column. fill in our categories here. Replace these with actual names. First one's going to be Texas. <laughs> then Missouri. one will be Alabama. Okay. 
as you can see as we type the names here they appear on the chart. Let's go ahead and close the Excel. Returns to the presentation. And again let's save our changes. Okay, so if for some reason we didn't make all the changes on the Excel that we wanted to, we can get back to it. So let's say I want to change the series numbers to actual year values. I can select Edit Data, and it will reopen the Excel file for me. And I can go ahead and change those. Let's do 2007. 2009. And go ahead and close that again. And you'll see that's, oh, it didn't change for me. Let's go ahead back and correct that. So, okay, there we go. It's updated now. And again, let's save our changes. The chart can be further edited by selecting it, and under Chart Tools you can modify the chart with Design, Layout, or Format. Okay, so let's select Layout, and under Chart Tools Layout, select Chart Title. and select Center Overlay Title. And let's go ahead and put a title in. Okay, now let's put some data labels in our chart. Here. Select Inside End. And you see how it puts the values right in the chart itself. Now let's give some highlights to our chart. Let's go to Design and the More selection. And let's go ahead and select one of these to highlight the chart itself and give it more definition. Now, if we're not satisfied with the way our chart looks, we have options available. We can select Change Chart Type, and we can go ahead and come down, and we could select Pie Chart, and select OK, and you can change it to a pie chart. And if that still isn't what we want, select it again, and we can come down to here. Select 3D Pyramids. Click OK. And we now have three-dimensional pyramids to depict our chart. Okay, we're now going to uh, create a table uh, for this presentation. So let's go down to slide number 18. And again, it's an empty slide. And we're going to insert a table. Let's go ahead and select the Enter Table icon. And here you can enter the number of columns and the number of rows that you wish. For my purpose, I need four columns and nine rows. And when you create this table, PowerPoint creates a default formatting on it. It also creates a header row by default. And in this case, we don't want the header row. So let's go ahead and uncheck that. Now we have a blank table here ready for data to be entered. You can enter characters or you can enter numbers. I'm going to go ahead and enter all the data in here, and I'll be right back. OK, so we have all the data typed in now. And now we can format the table itself. You select the table, and you, you know when it's selected when you have the border around it. 
This is not selected. This is selected. Once it's selected, the Table Tools Design ribbon opens up, and you want to select the More selection. And these are put in categories of Best Match for Document, Light, Medium, and down here would be Dark. So let's go ahead and select a light area and select, let's select style accent 5. And the purpose of that is to make your table more readable. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And let's go ahead and center our table. And now let's center the text on the table. And then save those changes. And these tables are modifiable after the fact. In this case, we're going to go select the Texas cell. And we're going to select Insert Above and then we're going to select Merge Cells. So we've created a new title bar above the table. And let's go ahead and put a title in there. And in the height area, let's change that to 0.75. Now under Table Tools Design, let's select the header row. And that is now a header row with the formatting for such. And now under Table Styles, we're going to select the Shade button and select Texture. And we're going to select the Canvas Texture. I have to select that again. It seemed to disappear on me. There we go. Okay, so let's work on shapes and objects. Let's go down to slide number 20. And let's select the slide. And in the Homes tab, select the Layout. And select Title Only. So we're going to insert shapes into this slide. So in the Drawing group, under Home tab, select Shapes, come down to Basic Shapes, and select the cube. And click within your slide, and a cube is placed in that slide. Go up to Basic Shapes again, and this time in the recently used shapes, see the cube is now there. Select it again and place another cube there. And do that again. Select the cube and place another cube there. And we'll reposition these shortly. And we come up to the shapes group again. And we want to select the right pointing arrow and put it there. Come up to the shapes again and this time we want the left pointing arrow and we're going to put it there. Okay, We're going to straighten these up just a little bit. Select it and move it there. Take this one, move it to the opposite side there. And we're just trying to make this a little neater. Put that there.
showing the flow from one process to another here. And we're going to have a longer arrow coming over here like that. There we are. And we want this one to come up just a little bit. And now we're going to use the rotate handle here and point it down like that because we want to show the direction of information going from this one to that one. And we'll stretch this out just a little bit more here so that there's no doubt of the direction of information flow. Okay, now let's go ahead and save right back. Actually, I'd like this to be a little more elongated so it's obvious that the mouse would work that the information is flowing in this direction. And let's save our changes. Okay. Okay. So now let's format the shapes on this slide. So with that slate shape selected, select shape fill and picture. And we're actually going to place a picture on the slide. Let's select the cotton gin picture and select insert. And you can see the picture actually appears on the shape. We're going to do that for this shape now. Again, select the shape, select shape fill, select picture, and we're going to put this picture, potato chip. Okay. Now we select the can shape, select shape fill, and we're just going to color this one. There we are. Now let's, for the last shape here, okay, we're going to put a different effect on this, select shape effects, select glow, and we'll put a little glow onto this one. There we are. And we'll do a little additional formatting on this feature here. Select the outline. Select dashes. And let's select square dash, square dot dashes. Okay, now we're going to link some of these shapes. Go ahead and click the upper left cube. And while holding the control key down, click the upper right cube and the lower right cube. Now in the Arrange group, select Group and select Group. Okay. And those cubes are now arranged in a group. With the objects now clustered in a group on the setting we just did, you can now resize them and move them together. If you notice one will turn as the other turns. Straighten it up again. And resizing resizes all of them at the same time. And, and let's make some adjustments to the can. Okay. Let's go ahead and drag the yellow resize down so it's even with the middle of the can. Now we're going to copy this arrow and we're going to paste another arrow here. Okay. And let's resize it a little bit. Let's go ahead and right click on the can and select copy and we're going to paste another can there and we're going to paste another can there. Okay, now let's go ahead and rearrange the can. And let's 
let's save our changes. Okay, let's go ahead and put a title on this one that doesn't have a picture. out and I've ungrouped these so that they no longer respond together. And now I want to format the text that I typed in the box. So come up to Word Art Styles and let's go ahead and select that. You can see it formatted the text cottonseed oil mill. Okay, now let's go ahead and label this one. chubbier in the back. There we go. And a little wider. Make them all look the same. Now a little too wide. And this one needs to be just a little taller. And a little shorter. And now let's add some animation to the objects. Click any of the shapes and click Animation. Click, select Custom Animation. And select Add Effect. Point to so Add Effect. Point to Entrance. Select More Effects. Click up here and then select OK. And the effect is set to be triggered by start on click. Okay, select the top arrow. Select add effect. Point to entrance. Click more effects. Select Exciting. Okay. Pull that down to get to the Exciting group. Select Glide. Click OK. This effect is also set to be triggered by Start Click. Okay, now let's add animation to this shape. So select the box, select Add Effect, Entrance, More Effects, again, get down in the Excited, select Bounce, and select OK. Then select the when to start it and select start after previous. Okay. okay, now we're going to assign animation to the arrow. Again, we select add effects, entrance, more effects, and we're going to select spinner for this one. It's under moderate. Select OK. And go ahead and select the speed. And we'll select medium. And again, we'll make sure that that's set to start on click. Okay, now we're going to animate the cans. But first, in order to do that, in order for the cans to animate 
together, they need to be grouped. So as before, we're going to select a can, hold the control key down, select a can, select a can, and come up to format, select group, and we're going to group them. Okay. Now they can be treated as one. Okay. So see when I select it now, it selects the whole group. Select Add Effect, select Entrance, select Appear, and again we want to make sure that it is set to Start on Click. And now we're going to build on the animations to clear the slide as it progresses. So we're going to click on the upper left cube, we're going to hold the Shift key down, we're going to click the top and the middle arrows. I'm going to click the upper right cube. Click the Add Effect and point to Exit. Click More Effects. And in the Basic section, click the diamond. select OK and in the custom animation pane we're going to click the start list arrow and select after previous okay. now select the insert tab select the text group text box button and type anywhere on the slide C O T T cotton seed is C -E -B -R -A -T -D, from the lint at the cotton gin. Again, let's go back to the Animations tab in the Customs Animation box. Select Add Effect, Entrance, and Appear. Click the Start arrow in the Custom Animation and select With Previous. The new text box is now animated. Now I'm going to go ahead and center the text box. Over a little bit. And with the text box still selected, we're going to go down to reorder and we're going to move it up so that it is second on the list. There we go. And with the text box still selected, again select Add Effect, point to Exit, select Checkerboard, Click the Start on Arrow and select After Previous. On the Reorder Arrow, move it so that the Exit Text Box animation is third on the list. So we're going to move this up right below the other one. Select the bottom arrow, select Add Effect, Entrance, More Effects, scroll down to the Excited area, 
select pinwheel and select OK. And again, make sure that it is set to start on click. Select the last cube. Again, add effect, entrance, appear, and again, make sure that it is set to start on click. But let's change that. Let's make that after previous. Okay. And then let's save our changes. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to add a slide at this point. So we're going to go to the Home tab. We're going to come down and we're going to select slide number 21. Select New Slide. Select Blank. Select the Insert tab on the ribbon. Select Picture. The dialog box is going to open up where we can select the picture from. Okay, we're going to select the Sky. and Select Insert. And we want to spread it out here. We want it to cover the whole slide so there's no white areas. There we are. Again, we want to select the Insert tab. And then Picture. And we're going to select the truck and select Insert. Bring that down. Another picture. Select Insert, Picture, and we're going to grab the highway and bring that into view. And we'll bring the highway down so it looks like it's supposed to be there at the bottom. Okay, and now we want this to be in the background so we can find our truck again. So you can come up here and select send back and select that to send backward and now we can see our truck again so it sort of layers it for us and put our truck up here on top of the highway okay now that I found my truck again I do want it to be behind the highway I don't want to see the tires I want to make it look like it's actually on top you know, of the highway so I'm going to send it backward and it sends it backward one layer. Now you can see the tires are actually behind the barrier there, so it actually looks like the truck is on the highway. Okay, and again with the truck still selected, we want to get rid of this white area. So we want to come up here and select recolor. And we want to select set transparent. select that and now you can see the truck looks like it belongs there the sky shows right through so now we're going to add an additional animation so we make the truck appear to actually be moving on the highway so select add effect motion paths draw a custom path and line now come over to the truck click and draw the line from one side of the frame to the other. And you can see the truck actually moves across the highway. It moved rather rapidly, so let's come over here and change that speed to very slow. And now it looks much more normal. Okay, now we're going to actually insert a movie into one of our slides. Let's go up to slide number two and select the slide, click on the pane, 
on the Insert tab, come over to Movie, select Movie from File, and we're going to select this MPEG here. Click OK. Okay, so now the movie is embedded onto the slide. Let's come up here and select File and Save. And we're done. So let's take a look at our handiwork from the beginning. This is going to be a fast version of this slideshow. See the movie goes into play mode automatically. Skip on through that. And let's skip on through the other slides. And I'll just get up to the ones that have some of the animation in them. So as you can see, we've taken a bare bones PowerPoint and made it quite nice and presentable. You can see the animations that we have here, how they populate automatically, do their job, do it very nicely. And that's it. That's the end. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope the next time you do a PowerPoint presentation, you're able to incorporate some of the methods that we have discovered today. Thank you.